Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a Knife News video. Uh, as usual, I'm going to encourage you to go over and check out Knife News' website for all of the full stories on this because they're all, there's way more than I could possibly ever cover in a video. Uh, and there's a lot in this video. So please bear with me. It's going to be a bit of a longer one. So, you know, get yourself a coffee or, uh, you know, put this up while you're working on some little project and listen to me talk about new developments in the knife industry. There's a bunch of stuff here that I'm super excited about. So I'll try to uh, restrain, restrain my enthusiasm a little. Uh, while we're on this subject, um, Please like and subscribe and share this video, especially this video, because those people who comment uh, and who are subscribers are going to be able to win uh, some of the knife bags that, or some of the knife pouches that Knife News sells. So we're gonna be giving those away. And, and all you have to do is comment on this video and be a subscriber. Uh, and I will just use a random comment picker uh, to um, come up with three names who've won and then we'll send those out to you, okay? so. Uh, that's pretty cool. So go ahead and comment below to be in on that. Furthermore, make sure that you're checking Knife News all the time. They, uh, I usually check in the morning, but they, they don't post stories all the time in the morning. Sometimes a new story will go up, you know, in the middle of the day or in the afternoon. Uh, so kind of be aware of that. Um, but make sure you're also you're following them on the, following their various social media outlets. The reason I know there's new stories is because I follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I don't do the Twitter thing. I've tried a couple of times and anyway, it's not for me. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into, first let's talk about new products or products that are new-ish, okay? Uh, top of the list here, this is one I really want to get my hands on, so if anyone from Tops is watching, uh, please uh, let me know when these are at retailers. Uh, the Tack Rays from Tops, it's a slip joint knife, and I've really honestly never been interested in slip joints, but this one looks really cool. So I really want to try it out uh, from Tops called the Tack Rays. If you don't know about that, again, check out the story on Knife News. Uh, but it's a it's a slip joint. Now what I like about it, it has a slightly longer blade tang. You've seen the slip joints before where, let me use an example, uh, where the blade tang extends back here and then wraps around so that when you hold it, you kind of get some, you're holding the knife from closing on you. Um, so that is, uh, that is a new knife from Tops that I'm really, really interested in. Now, the next thing I want to say is uh, zero tolerance. If you, you know, if you check out the new products on a lot of different knife pages, uh, you'll see that there are a bunch of ZTs being released that have M390 blade steel, that have, you know, different finishes, uh, different features. I think the, uh, I recently saw a 0450 or 0452 that had red backspacers and M390 and carbon fiber. Uh, so they've got a bunch of sprint runs coming that are really cool uh, and not that much more than, at least the ones I've looked at are not that much more expensive than the standard version. So really, really cool. I'm actually looking at a picture of the 801 right now with all the holes in it and the bronze anodized handle. Uh, the 801's a great knife already, so that really just ups the ante, makes it totally Awesome. Now, thinking of the next level of awesomeness, Buck 830 Marksman. Great knife, not well known. You don't see a lot of talk about it. You're, there's not, a, there are a few YouTube reviews now, but when I made my review, there were hardly any other reviews out there. Uh, absolutely great knife. I got it, I think, in a trade. Uh, or because, yeah, I think there was a good deal on one, so I picked it up secondhand, and I was sort of like, I'm interested to try it, but I, you know, well, when I got it, I was totally blown away. Uh, so, uh, SK Knives, or SK Blades, went on Blade Forums, and they did this sort of discussion where uh, they talked about various features, and SK Blades, if you click over to their website, uh, SK Blades does a bunch of, um, uh, does a bunch of, like, buck, modifications, I guess, or they sell a bunch of Buck Special Editions where there's there's Buck 110s there that have different features and different steel. Anyway, this is the Buck 830 Marksman, but instead of aluminum and S30V steel, it is S35VN and G10 with a slightly different handle design. Absolutely amazing looking knife. I I've ordered mine already because I wanted to make sure I got one before I told you guys about it. Uh, so. Uh, that is a knife I'm so wildly excited about, and maybe uh, Alex or if somebody from Knife News watches this, you may want to check that out and do a story on Knife News about that. 
uh, because I love the 830 and now to have it in G10 and S35VN, right? Same G10 like this Para and S35VN with that very cool Grant and Gavin Hawk. Uh, I think they call it a, I can't remember the name of the lock. Please someone comment below with that lock name. Uh, but really, really cool design, really cool knife and I'm really looking forward to that one. Now. Let's keep kind of carrying on here with some other cool stuff that uh, that we want to talk about. Now, those most of these stories now are going to be uh, about the industry instead of actual products. Although the Hoag X5 is a product, the reason I'm interested in it is because uh, they were able to modify the button lock system to make a stiffer detent so the flipper would really flip with uh, a lot of authority. And they even described that it makes a nice sound. So all of us know you know what I mean? You know, this is what we're looking for, right? You want that clack when when the flipper deploys. You want a lot of uh, a lot of oomph there behind it. And so Hogue has done some things to to make uh, their button lock flippers act more like uh, a knife with a strong detent, which I think is pretty cool. And, and Hogue is a great company. I haven't tried them. They have so many models I'm interested in, but I just haven't really gotten uh, the opportunity to check one out. Now. Uh, another story from Knife News, most of these, all except I think the Buck uh, S35VN Buck 830 will be from Knife News. Uh, a story that was on Knife News that kind of went a little viral and was really, you know, got a lot of response for a while was the morphing karambit. And I'm not even going to be able to demonstrate for you, I don't even know how to say this, but somehow you would, you would take this karambit and you'd squeeze it in your hand and the actual blade would kind of pop out like this. So such a such a cool design, uh, you know, maybe a bit of a novelty, uh, but the engineering behind it is really cool, and it'd be neat to see what else could be done with it. Um, so just a really cool knife. Now I don't know about the legality of karambits, or I mean karambits are fine, but I don't know the, about the legality of the, that knife in Canada. Uh, but probably a lot of you aren't in Canada anyway, so it won't matter. But a really cool uh, knife that got a lot of attention. Another story that was especially interesting to me was the story about millet knives. Now, millet knives is a, a knife maker, okay, maybe you could even say manufacturer, high-end manufacturer, that would do mid-techs, okay, so one of the Gavco mid-techs, I know the one was from Fair and Forge, they did one as well. Uh, Koenig knives, who've won awards and been very popular, uh, those Koenig knives have been made by millet knives, and so now millet knives is saying, hey, why don't we make this stuff ourselves? All right, and uh, so that's pretty cool. And so they're gonna be, in 2017, coming out with some of their own stuff, uh, which I totally get, right? Like, think about it, if you're a maker, you're making something at a price point, and you're sending it off to whoever's actually gonna sell it, and then they're selling it with a markup. Well, <laughs> that means two people are kind of marking up the price, but you could, you could go direct to market and have a pretty good profit margin if you're able to, to do things right and do things well. So that's pretty cool. And I really look forward to, I really am drawn to that high-end, high-end production slash mid-tech segment of the market. I love a lot of those knives. Uh, here's, here's a pretty good example right here, my uh, Riat Knives Valkyrie. Great, great knife. And I've had a number of knives like this. Uh, on my channel and uh, so you guys know that. Now, interestingly enough, you guys as viewers are kind of like, yeah, I don't know, normally uh, I I've just noticed that a knife that's over $300 US, uh, I won't get as many views. You know, I and I'm sure that has a lot to do with the fact that people uh, who are not into, there are more people into, you know, budget friendly knives than there are into high end knives. That makes total sense to me. So anyway, I'm really excited about what Millet Knives is doing, uh, but you can expect that those knives will be in that higher price category. So maybe some of you won't be that into it. Uh, by the way, just a cool note there, the guys from Millet Knives, they kind of cut their teeth at CRKT, or I mean, CRKT. How about Chris Reeve knives? That's where they kind of came up and learned about making knives so you know that they know what they're doing. Uh, now, this is something that uh, I saw the picture was immediately like, this is really cool. Um, two designers, Penna and Oser, I'm not going to give you much more. You'll have to go to Knife News to check out the full story. But what they've done with this knife they have, that's a collaboration between two designers uh, named Pella and Oser, and they have this Zulu flipper. 
Okay, now what it is though, if you look at it, it, it looks like a traditional knife. You know, it's, it's a fairly traditional handle, even a somewhat traditional blade shape, but then it's a liner lock with a flipper and bearings, and it's just a really cool sort of conglomeration of, you know, more traditional stuff that you might be seeing from Case or GEC, and then uh, more modern sort of features. So really, really cool design, and I really hope that that knife, uh, it's a custom knife, so extremely expensive, but uh, it does, but let's let's cross our fingers, and if, if there's anybody out there, manufacturers who are watching this, uh, somebody needs to make this a production knife. It is so cool. Uh, and you know, you'd at least sell one to me, okay? Uh, but I think they'd be, I think they would go over really, really well. Uh, such a really neat idea. Uh, and if you go on Knife News website, check out the way it looks, uh, and I think you'll be very impressed. Uh, next, let's talk about Kaiser knives. Uh, I've reviewed a couple of Kaisers. I've yet to have any from their uh, they have a higher series. This is the Vanguard series, and there's another series above this where the knives are mostly S35 VN and titanium. Um, they plan in 2017 to really cut back the number of knives they're releasing, and I think this makes a lot of sense. If you're like me and you know you try to follow new stuff coming out and you're interested in what different companies are doing and offering, uh, you know it's pretty tough to follow what's going on with Kaiser. They have tons of new models. Uh, they have new models that you don't really hear about anywhere. All of a sudden it's just, oh, there's this new knife from Kaiser. Uh, sometimes, you know, a lot of them I've heard about from, you know, maybe a maker that I follow on Instagram. And they'll say, oh, hey, I'm doing a collaboration with Kaiser Knives. And I find out that way and I'm like, really? I had no idea. Uh, so, what they've decided to do for 2017 is dial it back. Uh, stick to a, a certain number of models, I think 20 models for the year is the plan, and to stagger their release throughout the year so they're not just flooding us with, you know, a hundred different knives and we're sort of sitting there going, I, you know, who knows what they're up to. Um, so I think that's a good move for them, and I really, I love what they've done the last couple of years, 2015, 2016, uh, all of their designs, or, or a vast majority of their designs, have been uh, collaborations with really cool makers. Uh, you know, again, this uh, this Roach, I think, is just phenomenal. Uh, and I haven't pulled the trigger on the full tie version yet, just because every time I'm about to, I think there's another Titanium Kaiser that I might be, uh, that I want to check out, since I've kind of already got gotten to handle this and know something about it. Uh, maybe I'd rather do something new from them. So I just haven't pulled the trigger on any of the on the any of the higher end Kaisers, but I'm sure it'll happen. Uh, so uh, next, let's touch quickly on this is another story from Knife News. Kind of a cool Kickstarter campaign for this Urban Husky knife. Um, I wasn't able. I, I read into it a little bit. I did go over to their Kickstarter campaign and check out the video. Uh, I kind of like it. Um, I'd like to know some more. I, I was able to, you know, they're selling the knives from 125. Uh, they're pretty small. I don't know what materials they are for sure, but it's a pretty cool knife, and it's specifically designed for someone who wants to carry a knife in a situation where maybe it would be not as socially acceptable. You know, now what I would probably do is, you know, I find carrying something like this is not going to get you too much trouble. Um, you know, something like this, where it's got that sort of aggressive, murdery looking, to use a, a term from Nick Shabazz, blade. Um, that might not go over as well. Uh, and so, you know, maybe I'd go, yeah, let's, let's do something else. But, um, in this case, it's designed to kind of keep people calm <laughs> around you and they see you take out this knife. Uh, which I'm not sure how I feel about the the intent of the design, but it is a pretty cool design, and I'm interested in, in what they're doing. And um, you know, to get a handmade, or at least they claim it's a handmade knife for 125 bucks, is still uh, pretty impressive. Uh, let's touch on Boker for a second. Boker has uh, some new knives coming out in their they call it the Patriot series, and there's a bunch of them, different bunch of different colors. Uh, the knife is a little too small for me. It's very similar in size and purpose, I think, to a Spyderco Delica. Um, but the fact that they're kind of, you know, broadening their horizons, emphasizing a little more on the U.S. market and having some manufacturing take place in Italy rather than either Germany or China, 
Uh, I like all of that. I like the fact that it can be sort of a mid price point rather than super high out of Germany or super low out of China. Uh, and I like the fact that they're going to, you know, try to target the US audience a little more. I think that's a good move on their part. Now, Boker is a company that does have like this ridiculous number of knives out there. Uh, and from all over the place and, and you never really, you know, it, because of that, it's hard to know what you're getting. You know, you could buy a Boker that's a total piece of cheap Chinese junk. Uh, you could buy one that's still made in China, but it's actually pretty good uh, and, and kind of everything in between. And you could buy one that's, you know, made in Germany and costs three or four hundred dollars. So and, and everything in between. Uh, so it'd be nice to see Boker take a cue from Kaiser on this one. Uh, let's see, a couple more things to, to touch on. Uh, the Kai subframe lock stuff is still going on. If you remember um, the, the large size uh, Silent Soldier flipper from Bros Blades had a subframe lock and Kai is uh, taking issue with that. Uh, and then Charade, I wanna talk about Charade a little bit. What I wanna talk about about Charade is the fact that their uh, new, the second gen Sherlock knives uh, have been changed. And what's pretty cool about this is what happened was in a YouTube review, the Sherlock failed the spine whack test. Okay, and I believe Cutlery Lover did that review. And Charade actually redesigned the knife based on the feedback from uh, that video and maybe one other. I can't remember if Survival on Purpose did that as well. Anyway, uh, I know that Charade saw what happened and redesigned the knife, which I think is awesome. Like as a as a YouTuber who is primarily a knife channel. Uh, you know, you gotta love that when someone actually, when a company pays attention to what a reviewer says and does something about it, that that's pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. And, and so, uh, I, although I, I haven't actually had one of these Sherlock knives in hand, uh, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't mind trying one out. Maybe I will in the near future. Uh, but I really think it, they deserve some credit for uh, making those changes based on you know what was going on in a review. Finally, uh, what I want to say is remember to comment on this video so that you can win uh, those knife pouches. Uh, remember to subscribe to this channel and remember to follow Knife News on all their social media outlets, at least whichever ones you use, and check their site regularly for news stories. Uh, thanks a lot, Alex, for helping with this giveaway and. Uh, Gotta say, I love what you guys are doing over there. Keep it up. We'll talk to you soon.